Well, I don't want to make the same mistake that my wife did at one point. You know, driving through the yard with the skid steer when it was wet. That's just rude. I know. And then she didn't even fix the ruts. You're right. It was very rude. I did have plans to put our new flagpole up. However, remember how much water was in that hole yesterday when I showed you? Yeah, there's even more now. So I guess we are going to skip over that for now and move on to some shop work. It was just supposed to be cold today. It actually wasn't supposed to rain hardly at all. Weatherman got us good. Man. On a brighter note, the sheep do not seem bothered by the rain. Now they're just chowing down. Today, we are going to finish up some lights on the back of the side-by-side, -side, because we didn't finish that last video. And we are going to switch two of, so these two outside lights right here. We're gonna take the outside lights off so this one right here, and then that far outside one over there. We're gonna take them off and we're gonna switch them out with some floodlights, and then we're adding floodlights down here on the step so that we can see clearly out to the side of the tractor. Because right now, I can see very well. Here, actually, I'll show you. Let me turn these lights off real quick. It'll make more sense then. But that's just our driving lights, which that's okay. We want those to be more of a beam so that it doesn't reflect off the hood or anything like that. I mean, it's it's on the hood, but not nearly as bad. And I know on the camera, it's gonna show that it reflects really bad off this pipe, but this pipe painted black, and it actually is not bright at all off of that pipe. When we turn the floodlights on, so the floodlights are gonna turn these lights on behind me. Which, like I said, it shows, it lights up everything really well. But, what it doesn't do, so if I look out the side window right here, you can see that if I turn these back off or back on, the light that's next to us is pretty minimal. And while right now it doesn't matter so much because we have a lot of daylight coming in, it matters a lot at night because I really cannot see well to the side of me. I need this bolt to go through this ladder. There is a uh, spot where I could put a carriage bolt right here. I'm not going to do that because I do not want this on the bottom step because it's going through tall grass or in general, anything that's going to get hit up here, or anything that comes through here, it'll rip that light off potentially. We're going to drill this right here. I want to keep the red wire, which is our hot, I want to keep that inside of this rubber sheathing. However, this ground wire, I want to pull it so it rips the side here. That's what I'm really aiming for. Just like that. Even though it's opened up, we can still push this right back in. And by doing so, it's going to protect this wire from heat elements, you know, stuff that runs under the tractor, like we talked about sticks and all that good stuff. Both sides are already mounted. We have not set this up. I'm not going to lock this until after I turn them on at night and see where they're pointing. I think that where they're at is probably pretty good, but I just want to double check that. Other thing is, you notice that we still don't have wiring done. Well, that's because I have to go up top and take the lids on top of the cab there. We're going to take the six bolts, I think it is, off so that I can run the same wire that is powering this light right here, we're going to jump her off of this one and come down this side of the cab through this tube right here. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side, and that'll take us our power directly to these lights. I don't want these to come on unless I have all of the floodlights on, because driving down the road, this would blind the crap out of somebody, uh, especially a car driving by. It's going to be kind of, you know, you think about it, if you're in a car, you're sitting somewhere around this height, it's going to be like right here in their face. We don't want that. Remember how I said that there was uh, like six bolts up here? I was just kidding. I meant to say 
It was like 20. I know I'm interrupting normal programming, but if you made it this far in the video, you probably like it. So if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and click that thumbs up button down below. I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button too. It's free, it doesn't cost anything. We don't email you, bug you, or anything else like that. It's just to let you know that whenever we post a new video, it will, uh, YouTube will, will let you know about it. Thanks. All right, we got our wire ran to come through the side. It's so basically we went through this hole right here and it comes out under here, forced it back up into where you see light coming, which is right here. And then went down back where you see light down here to bring it down the side of the tractor here. It's really not that bad. There's covers that make it really simple to run whatever you need to run down the sides of the cab. So just a little bit time consuming, take everything apart. That's all. I'm going to show real quick how this goes back on. Um, I think there's going to be other folks like on the Alice Chalmers side of the house that are curious about it. So all the way up and down. So you, this is where your handles go, you know, like when you're walking up and there's one more bolt hole up here and then there's a couple on the inside right here. All of them are very simple to find, but um, I'm going to save you the time and effort that I took looking for how I'm going to run this wire. So, like I said, just take this, take this side off, and uh, or take that, you know, that track off right there, so you can run your wire, and a lot simpler than trying to fish it through, like I was going to originally do. So, learn from my mistakes. Right, we got everything mounted up. We are going to continue to use blade connectors because that is what the previous owner or maybe even Alice Chalmers had done for how they originally had them. And we're going to continue that trend because it is convenient whenever you have to switch lights out or if you want to switch lights out. So there's no point in changing that. Run this back through here so we don't have extra. I don't like cutting it off because you never know when you're going to change something up or use it for a different application. So it's nice to keep it long. There's a lot of disassembly to run two wires. What? There's a lot of disassembly to attempt to run two wires. Hey, don't you know it's dangerous to leave the door open? Hmm? For two reasons. You know what they are? You can walk around and smack your head on it. <laughs> One is, yeah, this is right here. Which, granted, this tractor is not tall enough to you get you the melon. You think you're smart, do you? Two, you can run the battery dead with the dome light. You didn't realize the tractor's that fancy. 40 years old has a dome light that opens with the door. Way ahead of its time. Are you listening? I'm looking up statistics. Lights are all mounted, good and solid. And we're gonna go outside and test them. But first off, wiring is completed as well. And we have disconnects right here. Um, matter of fact, right there that you've seen us putting on. Those are on there just in case we change out lights at a later date or whatever. Just same, same reason as up top. It's easy to disconnect, swap them out. Um, you know, lights fail, I get it. You know, LEDs are supposed to last for a long time. And they do, but it's still a man-made product and still does fail. Next situation that we're going to talk about is our fuel filter. I want to get that taken care of and uh, get it where it needs to be and our coolant filter. So let's do that real quick and then we'll run outside and test these out. Hoping we don't make too big of a mess here, but like usual, no promises. I honestly don't know because 
Oh, it looks like there's a valve here, so let's close that valve. <laughs> Son of a gun, that's on there. can probably tell the loader does not make maintenance simpler. And I'm going backwards here. Let me go that way. Look at that. Whew. The loader makes changing filters a, a little bit of a pain. Doable, but a little bit of a pain. Because you can't take those side panels off. You can take those side panels off, or even without the side panels off, honestly, you can access all the filters relatively easily, but it's neither here nor there. On to bigger and better things. Let's get this fired up, get her out of here, and uh, let's go test our lights out because it is dark out now. So we're going to give you the easiest explanation of this possible. So right here, these are our driving lights. These are basically two spotlights that are in the center of the tractor on the front. The two outside ones that you've seen us replace used to be spotlights as well. Well, they are no longer spotlights, they are floodlights. And they make it to where we can see incredibly well. And as a matter of fact, it almost makes it to where we can see on the side. Still have a blind spot, but not nearly as bad. Over here, there's absolutely no blind spot because on this side, I still have the, I have a step light on and hooked up. The other one is just, it's all wired and everything, but I disconnected it just for this demonstration to explain what and how it's going to help. So you can see right here, there is no blind spot. I can see perfectly fine. On this side, is not the case. On this side I have a blind spot and it's not terrible but where it becomes an issue is when I'm driving on property that's not mine. When I'm driving on property that's not mine it makes it very difficult for me to know for sure what something is until I'm already there and the biggest thing that we will do at night is brush hogging. And that's because sometimes weather will allow us to cut hay at night, but reality is we will never rake or bale at night. If we're cutting hay at night, it's generally because it's real windy and it's allowing us to cut that hay and not have a dew that stays on it. Well, when those opportunities come by, it is important, especially on this side, for me to be able to see what is going to go into that mower conditioner. The brush hog is pretty forgiving, and it's really a pretty stout piece of equipment that if you run into something like a, say a stump, it has stump jumpers on it, it's not gonna damage the equipment so much. The mower conditioner is not forgiving at all, especially the one we have. It doesn't have shear hubs, it's gear on gear, and if you hit something hard, it's gonna strip teeth, and unfortunately, all those gears share one bar, and those teeth are gonna go through all of them, or all of the gears on that bar. So, I hope this helps as far as explaining the importance of our lights. I don't know how else it could turn out because those lights are incredibly bright. 
But from the outside, this is what you see. So we have this light right here on the step pointing out, and then all the way around, right? We have our floodlights. Everything on the back is all floodlights. The two center ones on the back are pointing pretty well straight backwards and down. The outside ones are pointing out at about a 45 degree angle and down. They're pretty much all pointing down at the same angle. On the passenger side, same thing, step light. And then we have a floodlight pointing out on the outside on both sides of the front at about a 45 degree angle again. Probably around the same, uh, pointing down around the same angle as the back. But then in the center, we have those spotlights that we drive with. So when we're driving down the road, yeah, they're still gonna be bright and kind of un inconvenient for a driver to approach, but it's still better than us coming up with all of these lights on, all the floodlights and everything, because then they definitely can't see anything other than thinking a UFO is coming. So that is exactly why it's set up like this. I really like it and it's much better, so. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's kind of a slower video. Uh, not as cool as last week's video where, uh, you know, we got the front wheels of this tractor off the ground pulling a trailer out that was stuck. And uh, yeah, but this is good information and I hope it helps others because we didn't really know how well it was gonna turn out, but we knew we had to do something because I just don't want those blind spots. Thanks for watching, have a blessed week, and we'll see you next time.